Donald Trump named Caroline Levitt as his press secretary. And uh, as you're about to see, she is an absolute savage. Republican rhino Trey Gowdy was absolutely shredded on Fox News over the Matt Gates AG selection. And a Democratic congresswoman might actually be in trouble for slandering Tulsi Gabbard in the clips that I'm about to show you. I'm Zach Costello, and this is The Zach Costello Show. Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz is in hot water as she made these slandering comments against Tulsi Gabbard. Remember, the Democrats consider Tulsi a traitor because she used to be a rising star within the Democratic Party. And as the narrative typically goes for Democrats, if you're no longer a Democrat, well, then, of course, you're an enemy and a threat to America. Watch this. Tulsi Gabbard is someone who has met with war criminals, violated the Department of State's guidance, and secretly, clandestinely went to Syria and met with Assad, who gassed and attacked his own people with chemical weapons. She's considered to be, essentially, by most, uh, by most assessments, a, a Russian asset and would be the most dangerous. Is that how you dangerous... consider her? Is that what you oh, consider yes. her? Oh, yes. Uh, there's no question. I can. There's a lot of talk that this woman needs to be held accountable for this type of slander. This level of lying from the Democrats during this election cycle has risen to unprecedented levels, and the American people are sick and tired of it. We are sick and tired of being lied to. And speaking of, Republican rhino Trey Gowdy was on Fox News talking about how Matt Gates would never be approved for attorney general and was absolutely shredded for being out of touch with what the American people want. We are sick and tired of being lied to by the media and government establishment, yes, but we are sick and tired of a government that doesn't work for us. And he just learned that the hard way. Watch this. Right. Matt Gates was nominated for this position because we have a problem at the Department of Justice. For the last eight years, they have run roughshod over rule of law in this country. They have prosecuted political opponents. They ran the Russia collusion hoax. And too many people in Washington, D.C. did not stand up against what was happening there. And many Americans are upset about it. Matt Gates is one of the most effective people at fighting that Russia collusion hoax and other information operations, whether it was the Brett Kavanaugh information operation, the Donald Trump Russia collusion hoax information operation, or the one that is referenced here which is something that the FBI and Department of Justice, which hate Matt Gates, looked into and cleared him of any wrongdoing. The idea that we're that this is about the, the issue is corruption. It's the Department of Justice's corruption. And people are sick and tired of people in Washington, D.C. doing nothing as these people try to destroy the country and getting upset at someone who actually might root out the, the corruption there. We don't have a Department of Justice. We have a Department of Injustice. And that's why you get Matt Gates as a nominee. Amen. It's not going to be easy to root out the deep state. And yes, Republicans have the House and Senate. But remember, there are rhino neocons who are just as set on sabotaging Donald Trump as the Democrats are. They should understand clearly, though, the American people just elected Trump to get this stuff done. All of these Trump nominees are individuals that are proven to be effective and competent and get the government back working for the American people. And finally, speaking of someone who is well equipped to deal with the lies, rot, and propaganda from the left, Donald Trump has chosen Caroline Levitt to be his new press secretary. And if you haven't seen her in action, you need to see the clip that I'm about to show you. Trump has a solid record of choosing savage press secretaries. And from the looks of it, Levitt's going to be right up there with Kaylee McEnany and Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Check this out. You want to talk about violence against political opponents? Let's talk about the fact that Democrats have been labeling President Trump a threat to democracy for the better half of 10 years. Let's talk about how they have compared him to Hitler, one of the worst mass murderers in the history of the world, and that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden weaponized the court system and the justice system in this country against Donald Trump in an attempt to imprison him. He sat through a courthouse for seven weeks this past year, and the Democrats were hoping he would go to jail for it. That is real political violence that has led to two heinous assassination attempts on President Trump's life that, by the grace of God, he was able to escape and he he is here with us today. So yes, President Trump knows a little bit about political violence because he's experienced it himself. And talking about the, the, the tragic realities of war that, that Liz Cheney and her father, Dick Cheney, have got this country into is not political violence. It's talking about the reality of the foreign conflicts that the Washington, D.C. establishment have sold out young Americans to for decades. Yet, of course, after for those attempted assassination attempts on the former president's life, 
he, his opponents reached out to him and said they do not accept political violence. That has been a key difference. I, I do want to play you. No, no, please. His opponents are saying to this very day the same rhetoric that led to those two assassination attempts. The second attempted assassin on President Trump's life echoed the sentiment that President Trump is a threat to democracy. And if you're a deranged lunatic and you're mentally ill, you will believe that lie. And yes, you will take political violence like we have seen in two instances against President Trump. Last week, Tim Walz and Kamala Harris said that everyone who showed up to President Trump's rally at Madison Square Garden was a Nazi. That's despicable dangerous, divisive rhetoric that is spewed by the Democrat Party every single day. And I'm so sick and tired of the media pointing the finger at Donald Trump and saying that he is sowing division in this country. He is not. The media is for pushing hoaxes like the one that you all pushed today, and the Democrat Party is for pushing lies about him. But the good news is Americans don't buy it. And that's why today in 2024, President Trump is more popular than he has been since 2016, because people don't trust the media, and they're not buying the Harris campaign's closing argument that he's some great threat to our democracy because they lived under him for four years as president and our democracy and our country was stronger than it is today. Yeah, I think uh, we're looking good on the press secretary front. <laughs> she should be giving us some good own the libs content to cover for the years to come. Good for me selfishly, but good for us truth seeking American people. I'm Zach Costello and this is the Zach Costello show.